right, Coach, uh, start with an opening statement, and we'll go right into questions. Well, I'll open with um, a lot of respect for Ohio State, for uh, Ryan Day and his program. Just saw C.J. Stroud out there, and my heart goes out to those guys because uh, they played well enough to win the game and um, got a really good football team. Uh, so do we, and uh, our guys are extremely resilient. We talked halftime about some games we've been in this year we've been behind in, including the Missouri game. And um, I had no doubt that our team would come out fighting. Um, did not play our best football game. A lot of that had to do with Ohio State. Um, I have a lot of respect for them. I have a lot of respect for these players that are on this podium with me and the ones in the locker room. And if we want any chance of winning a national championship, we have to play a lot better football than we played tonight. Um, but we got to keep the resiliency and composure along with us. All right, we'll go into questions. Raise your hand. We'll get you a microphone. Let's go right over here, midway on the right side. Yep, next line, next, next aisle. Thanks. Coach, there was a lot of rotation, especially defensively, um, with guys like Tresman Marshall, Ryan Davis, uh, Marvin Jones all stepping into play roles. A, was that a thing to adjust to Ohio State's tempo? And then also, how would you um, – rate those players that came in and played roles after maybe not playing a lot this season? Well, we wanted to play a lot of players. Uh, when you get this late in the season, you know, guys get winded. Uh, it's an up-tempo game. So, you know, we, we, we say if you're good enough and you practice well enough, you should play. And we felt like against LSU, we had some guys that got winded in the game. And we wanted to play Tresman and Ryan. And Marvin had to play. We had Chaz go down with an injury. Had Darnell go down with an injury. We had guys at one point, we had our third and fourth string guys on special teams that have not even played all year. So we're at the point in a long season where it's accumulating and you're having to play a lot of guys who maybe haven't played. All right, right here, Alex. Hey, Kirby, can you kind of walk us through what you saw to call that timeout on that fake punt, kind of walk us through that moment? Yeah, they just were not in their traditional formation. So um, a lot of teams carry that speed break. They come up the line quick. Everybody's lined up tight. Um, and um, we, we, we've seen it, you know, in the SEC. A lot of teams carry it and you try to practice it, but it's another thing when they actually do it and execute it, you know. So uh, it was one of those gut reactions that I didn't think that uh, we had it lined up properly to stop it. And so uh, call time out. All right, we'll go right next door, Jeff. Go, Jeff. Uh, two questions. First, uh, Kirby, can you say what you said to Stetson um, coming off the field there at the end of the first half? And then Stetson, um, on the last drive, some of your teammates talked about how everybody said stuff in the huddle um, before the last touchdown drive. and if you could just recall what was said and what you said also. The, coming off the field in, in, the, in the second half, it was really simple. I mean, we, we had to make a decision whether we wanted to go after it, you know, and, 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 and go try to score with, I don't know, we didn't have much time left, but we did have timeouts. And at the time, I felt like every possession was valuable and I wanted to be aggressive. And uh, we called a play, they batted a ball, we called another play, and, he, you know, he was in the pocket for a while, threw a ball a little high over the middle, it put us at risk. And I told him, if we're going to trust you to do this in two minutes, you got to make good decisions. If it's not there, you know, take off and run. And, and they almost got an interception, which could have been uh, really costly. We just talked about the two-minute drive. That's really it. Um, as far as the huddle, I don't know. I mean, I, I don't really remember, recall, you know, words. But I, just looking at everybody and saying, all right, hey, we hadn't played our best. And we hadn't done our jobs to the best of our ability. But, hey, we're here now. And it's in our hand now. You know, defense stood up whenever we needed them to. And where else would you rather be? You know, having the ball with two minutes left, and if you score a touchdown, you win the game. And I, I looked around, and there was just a whole bunch of just determined, strong stares from all the dudes and gave me confidence. Everybody else had confidence when we went down the field. Right, right here in the front and on the right. Uh, yeah, I guess when I saw Kirby and Javon for the, against that Ohio State offense, they they were clicking, they're running. Javon, I guess I'll start with you. The, the resiliency you guys have shown all year. I mean, when a team's clicking like that, connecting like that, uh, how do you stay in it, stay that resilient? Where's the mindset at? And I guess I'd ask Kirby, what are you trying to do on defense to get a guy like Stroud out of rhythm when he's hitting like that? Um, well, we give a lot of credit to Ohio State. Those guys made plays when they needed to make plays. Um, but we knew coming into the game, it wasn't going to be perfect. Um, you come into a game like this, uh, 
college playoff, we know you're gonna give up some plays. They're gonna make some plays. We're gonna make some plays. You can't get up. You can't get too high up, and you can't get too low. So we knew, uh, like I said, we we're gonna have to rely on the connection that we built throughout the off season and the resiliency. I couldn't be more proud of a team. Yeah, it, it, a lot of credit goes to them. You know, I mean, we we we, we tried man, we tried zone, we mixed it up. Uh, probably the most disappointing thing was the, the series before the half. You know, like they they earned it most of the time, and we we had some stops, we had some big stops, some big momentum stops in the first half, and then we had some big momentum stops in the second half. But the one before the half was probably the one that that, that really you know, we had we had seized a little momentum there, and then they went to the half with the momentum after that. That's that's probably the most disappointing thing that we had. But hey, look, they got really good playmakers and they got a guy that can throw the ball to them. They got a really good offensive line. They, they can score points. And uh, if you can't, at halftime, I told our guys, we have way more rushing yards than they do. When you look at college football playoff games, the team that rushes the ball better almost wins 95% of the time. But that wasn't the case because we had four missed sacks and they had one sack. So if you miss four sacks and they get one sack and you have a turnover, there's, there's usually gonna be uh, there's going to be some tough times there. All right, Zach. I guess that's it for everybody. You said you wanted the ball in your hands, obviously, to win the game, but there was still time left, so you couldn't control that last play. What was it like just watching, and did it seem like forever by the time the ball was snapped and eventually kicked? Yeah. Um, trust them. Um, then it's up. You know, we, we, we talked about we had a little powwow there on the sideline the fourth quarter, and, you know, it wasn't going good. They're, they're beating us. Um, we had sucked on offense, and you know it was just hey, play by play, do your job. Doesn't don't it doesn't matter what happens on the other side of the ball or, or another position. Do your job, and so we had done our job, and then we trusted the defense. Um, and then at that point, you know, we, it was up to you know, I guess the kicker. All right, got a pat. Yeah, a question for Kirby and a question for Javon. Uh, for Javon, if you could go through the play where you broke up the pass for Harrison in the end zone. And then for Kirby, did you get word on the headset about the formation in the punt, or did you see that yourself on the sideline? Um, it was really just a uh, CJ scramble. Um, he made a play with his feet. Um, he threw the ball up in the air. And uh, we see, I seen Marvin's hands going for the ball and uh, just tried to make a play when I could. Yeah, for me, I saw them lined up in it, and uh, there was that, there's a line that's a special teams line, but I was on the defensive line because we had just come off of a defensive stop. So um, saw the formation, and uh, apparently they were saying something on the special teams line, but I wasn't on that line. I was on the defensive line and was prepared to call a timeout, which I don't like doing because it costs you possessions when you do that. you got to be prepared and not burn them. All right, next we'll go over here. Ken? Setson, um I want to ask you, Two sequences. That fourth down pass to to um, Bowers. I think you came off the field thinking you guys were short, and, and you were able to come back and get that field goal. I'm curious, kind of what that was, that all that was like. And then the the second, what was the design of the the pass play to Arian that allowed him to get you know so open downfield? Uh, well, yeah, I think the whole stadium thought we didn't get it, um, and then they reviewed it, and uh, Brock was pretty dumbfounded because he was like, I think I got it. And um, I was like, well, I thought you did too because the route, you catch it at five yards and it was fourth and six. And the way, I mean, people don't stop him for a yard, but I, I didn't know. Um, and then we came out and freaking, I threw a lateral. Uh, anyways. Um, uh, stupid. Um, but, and then, yeah, Arian, that one was just run fast and he did and he made the dude fall um dudes dude can do things that people can't do um he can run like people can't run and he can go get the ball um and i was just once i saw him i think the whole sideline was standing up and saying he's open and so i just i just tried to put it on him and let him do the rest all right all the way back in the left stetson have you ever played in a game like that at any level uh, yeah, no, probably not. That was that game was that was a good game. I mean, I'm looking at these stats right here, and they're pretty much dead even across the board. Um, yeah, no, that was that was a that was a special. Okay, right here on the left. Uh, two questions, uh, Kirby. First, talk, um, speaking on Arian, uh, the track speed that he has. I know he's like ten one in the hundred. Um, just that importance of having that speed there. And then Stetson talking the other day about um, you sitting with your mom over Christmas break talking about 
could you imagine being here? What's the next conversation going to be after a game like this? Well, I think I was saying that, oh, I mean, I don't know. I think we'll probably hug and, you know, we're here now. You know, it's not, you know, we've been here for a while. Um, now we got to take care of business. We got to go prepare. We got to, you know, we got nine days or whatever, I don't know, um, to play a really good TCU team. Um, and so we got to prepare our butts off. You know, we didn't play our best game, uh, starting me, you know, Coach Smart said in the locker room, we had two three and outs to start the second half. And, like, that doesn't happen. And, and that's on, that falls on me and that falls on our offense. And we got to fix that. And, um, and so we're, we're going to go to work. Mark. Kirby, what's it like to win like this at the end compared to winning like the Rose Bowl at the end? And uh, Stetson, do you remember the Rose Bowl? Uh, you didn't play, obviously, but you had a lot, of, lot to do with the uh, scout team. Well, you, you got a lot of props for that. <laughs> yeah, it's, it, it's amazing any time you win. I think uh, emotionally it takes a lot more out of you to have a game like that as compared to you know, maybe the, the Michigan game was last year in terms of uh, the game being over you know, in the fourth quarter. But this was an uh, emotional roller coaster. It was a back and forth game. It was uh, who's going to blink, um, two really good teams fighting. And it sounds like they had a similar game back and forth. So uh, it'll be two good teams playing for it next week. Right side on the aisle. Stetson, can you contrast how you felt um, in the two-minute drill to end the first half and then the two-minute drill to end the game? Uh, yeah, I mean, we practiced that in the um, – which I wouldn't say I executed, but we practiced it uh, a lot uh, where it's two-minute and a half, two-minute in the game. We need it, we don't need it. Or we need it and we would like to have it. And, you know, I mean, I can't put the ball – in jeopardy like that before the half because we don't have to have it. Um, and then at the end of the game, I don't know, it kind of frees you up. And I mean, you got you, you got to, otherwise we're going to lose. Um, so I don't know. Yep, here on the left. Yeah, so much of the story surrounding this wide receiver room has just been injuries this year. And tonight you see AD make a big play, Arian, Dom early in the game, Kiaris late there. How big is it for that room, and this can go to Kirby or Stetson, for them to have the ability to showcase that they can actually go out there and make those plays now that they're on the field? Yeah, I, I, I thought BMAC did a good job selling to our team. You know, we had several coaches stand up and speak on Friday, and he talked about, you know, the, the, the personal – respect level that he has for all the attention their receivers are getting. And they certainly deserve that. They certainly deserve that. They're really good, really talented. But we got some good wideouts too. And they had a chip on their shoulder. And they wanted to make some plays. And they got a quarterback that can get them the ball. And uh, a lot of those guys were able to come back. And it was, it's really been by committee when you look at it. I mean, you see AD, Arian, Ladd. I mean, all kinds of guys make a plays in the passing game for us. Marcus has made big plays. Coach Lamont, um I just want to say I want to congratulate you on an excellent game, even though you guys probably didn't play as well. Um, the question I have is, and you may not be able to answer this, but how is Washington doing? Because uh, I know he's a big part of the offense. It helps Brock out um, in, in the passing game and even in the running game also. So uh, can we expect him to you know, be it's in hard, the next one? hard to tell right now. It's ankle sprain. I don't know if it's high or low. Uh, he tried to go back and uh, couldn't go back on it, so we'll, we'll have to evaluate and see. The good news is he's got more than a, you know, a normal week, and I know he'll do everything he can to get back. He's headed out west, uh, back you know, towards where he's from, and uh, it'll be important to him to try to get back. All right, we've got time for just a few more. We'll go next right here. Yes, Dad, uh, you, you talked a second ago about you know worked on those you know last second, last minute drives a lot. How much does that help you? You know, kind of slow your heart rate down because you've done it before. Like I said, you may not have been successful in practice all the time. But how much does that help you relax and, and know what to do? Yeah, I mean, it's the it's the same thing with everything. Um, the more you do it, the more comfortable you get. Um, you know, and, and and we wrap a lot of two minutes. Uh, we know, you know, what calls we're going to do or. Um, you know, we've got players who, who study the game plan. And, and so it's, it's less so confidence in what I can do. And, you know, I know that they're going to be where they're going to be and, and they're going to win their matchups. And so all I've got to do is give them the ball. Um, so I'd say that slows my heart rate down. Um, I don't know. But, yeah, uh, definitely the reps. Chip? Kirby football's crazy. Uh, but sometimes you win games and you shouldn't and you shouldn't. And you lose games you shouldn't as well. What, where did this one fall for you? I mean, just in terms of you, you look up there at the end, your your uh, yeah. expression was priceless. 
It's, it's it, it, you know, I mean, really, I know you don't believe it. My heart goes out to those guys because they played well enough to win. And um, that's not, you know, my concern. My concern is the, the men in our locker room. And we played well enough to win, too, just well enough to win. And we played really hard uh, in the fourth quarter. I just, you know, I, I would have liked to have seen a, a little cleaner um, game. And, and you got to give them a lot of credit. I mean, that they, they disrupted a lot of that. Uh, and we didn't have, you know, a lot of turnovers. We didn't have self-inflicted wounds and they didn't either I mean both teams played really well and both defenses rose up and made stops it was a very competitive balanced game and there weren't a lot of big plays in the kicking game like you might expect uh, but really just proud for our guys all right next year Mike uh, Stetson uh, you make it look easy does it feel routine at this point you've done it so many times now can you just talk about the mindset and the way you operate in these clutch situations because you've done it again and again and again? I mean, yeah, no, I probably can't comment on that. I don't know. Um, I just try to do my job, um, you know, uh, you know, got to go back and look at the tape, see what we could clean up because it felt like there was a 30-minute period there where I just played bad football. And so we got to fix that. Um, but as to the rest, I, I don't know about that. All right, we'll take our final question right here. Coach Smart, congratulations on a hard-fought win. So how long do you give yourself to enjoy this before turning the page and focusing on the next one? No, we got to start tomorrow. I mean, we got a short window. So, you know, we can't start when we get back home. we got to sleep. <laughs> um, but we'll, 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 we'll get started tomorrow and uh, get, get, get jumped back on. Luckily, we caught the late game, but we caught the late game an hour from home. So I remember sitting at this point, 20, whatever it was, 18, 17, I don't even know what year it was, but we had a long flight. And uh, we had a short week. We had a seven-day week with a flight from, from Pasadena. So, uh, you know, we got a little more time. I think it's important to get healed. You know, our players have had a long season and a long week of practice this week. I want them to get away, remember what they're fighting for, and come back ready, rejuvenated, ready to go, because this is, this is what you do it for. Gentlemen, thank you very much.